Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Henny Performance Lab. And in this video, I want to compare two hitters, one fast pitch hitter, some of you well know is Sierra Romero. And I want to compare her swing to a hot younger hitter in the major leagues, Aaron Judge. He's a beast. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at each hitter separately. And then at the end, we're going to compare them and look at the pitcher's view and see how similar or dissimilar their swings are. And then we're going to end the video there. So first, let's take a look at Sierra Romero. This is a grand slam she hit to the opposite field when she's playing for the University of Michigan. And what you're going to see here, a couple elements that I wanted to highlight are from the catapult loading system. In the catapult loading system, it consists of three thing, three main things, but there are a couple other, other things that I put in there. But the three main things are showing numbers to the pitcher, down shoulder angle, and hiding the hands. And what we're going to see Sierra do, she's one of my favorite swing models for fast pitch softball because she does everything that we talk about. You can see her showing numbers. You can go from here to here is a big difference there you can see the downward shoulder angle being created by what i like to do with my hitters the back elbow raising the back elbow up just above the top hand thumb gives us a good downward shoulder angle and then you see her hiding her hands okay she's actively bringing her hands back this isn't just her showing her numbers and her hands are just going into that position she's actively hiding her hands from the pitcher and you can see those three there <clears throat> the other thing that i wanted to talk about you can see from this view is her back foot watch it stay sideways she does this very well on on most pitches now this pitch this is a grand slam that she hit to the right center field you're going to see her stay sideways now most people will say well yeah that's always the case or not always the case but that when these hitters do this that's that's only the case when they hit to the opposite field well i'm going to show you an example here in a minute where she pulled a ball to left center field for a homer and she stayed sideways as well, probably more so than she did here. But you can say her back foot staying sideways, which helps keep her on plane of the pitch and allows her to be able to transfer maximum power, maximum energy. <clears throat> the other thing that I want you to see is this idea of getting shorter and staying shorter. So if we take a bar, we put it across her head, she's gonna get shorter, she's going to use her knees. You can see how bent her, both of her knees are at landing. You can see this major bend there. So yes, we are seeing her head move forward. We're seeing her head move down, which most people will say you can't do that up to landing. Then her head stops moving, which we'll see in a chest view here in a minute. But you see her getting shorter and staying shorter. Look at the umpire's head for another frame of reference. You can see her almost drop to his eye level and she stays there. Let me give you another view. Let me give you the chest view. Here's the same swing. We're gonna look at the sideways back foot here and we're gonna look at one more thing that a lot of coaches tend to disagree on. Uh, but look at the back foot. Look at how it stays sideways from this view. The last thing I wanna talk about was a weight shift. A lot of these coaches now, but they say keep that back knee inside the back, the big toe because of forward momentum. Well, my argument is that's going to happen once the hitter starts to fall forward naturally. We don't have to cave the back knee in. And at this view here, you're seeing the back knee actually over the back ankle. What you're going to see Sierra Romero do here is you're going to see her actually rock back. She goes from a 50-50, rocks back to the back side, and then as she falls forward, and then as she falls forward, now you see that back knee shift inside the back foot. So we don't have to start hitters with the back knee inside the back foot. This is called a float or the weight shift is we have this little float before the fall happens. This is a timing mechanism. This would be the same as a Josh Donaldson or Jose Batista doing a leg kick. They do the same thing. You get this float action. It's like the top of a roller coaster before you head down the massive or the drastic drop. You get kind of weightless at the top and then you fall. And that's the thing. This is a timing mechanism that Sierra Romero is using. Let's take a look at another swing from Sierra Romero real quick and I want to show you her keeping the back foot sideways on a pitch she hits to left center field. All right, here's a pitch she hits to left center field. You can see left center field's going there. Now look at her back foot. Big difference, even more so on this pitch that she's staying sideways. Look at the whole thing's on the ground. Now I don't teach that. That's what she does. This is Sierra Romero, one of the best fast pitch softball hitters in the, in the professional leagues now and in college softball is doing this. Now, I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't teach my hitter to keep the back heel down, but hey, this is what she's doing. So let's take a look at Aaron Judge's swing. So here's Aaron Judge, and what you're gonna see here, we're gonna look at the catapult loading system and how he uses showing his numbers, downward shoulder angle, and hiding the hands, just like Sierra Romero does. So as we're gonna see right here, these are some of his swings, and these are his home run swings. 
uh, compilation of April of 2017. But what we're going to see is, you can see is 99 back here. You can see the first nine, but the other digit isn't quite, if you didn't know what his number was, you'd have a hard time figuring out what that was. Well, as he gets ready to pick up his front foot, you're going to see both numbers clear as day. So showing his numbers to the pitcher. The other thing you're seeing with that back elbow, just like Sierra Romero, you're seeing it, the elbow above the top hand thumb or so. And you're seeing this downwards, creating this kind of downward shoulder angle with, with the shoulders. The other thing you see him do is he's actively using his hands and hiding them from the pitcher. This isn't just a scapula load. A scapula load isn't enough. I've run a swing experiment using the Zep and only found doing 100 swings with a scapula load and 100 swings without a scapula load and only found one mile per hour average increase with the scapula load. I found an average of a five to six miles per hour difference boost in bat speed with showing numbers versus not showing numbers and a average four mile per hour increase in with a downward shoulder angle versus a level shoulder angle so showing the numbers and downward shoulder angle is going to net us the biggest change with this and this is what we see both hitters doing sierra romero and aaron judge so the the other thing i wanted to take a look at and compare is the back foot so with Aaron Judge on this swing, you're not going to really see him going sideways with it like Sierra Romero does. You're seeing him rotating over a little bit more. Let's take a look at a chest view of Aaron Judge. Here you can see a better view of the back foot and its behavior. You can see that he stays sideways to about right here and you see him flip over. The other thing that I wanted you to take a look at and compare to Sierra Romero is that to see him get shorter and stay shorter. So if we put this bar over his head as a frame of reference, a yellow bar, what you're going to see is he's going to drop below that bar as he turns and he's going to stay below that bar and even get lower. So we, we talk about, and this is actually an off speed pitch he's hitting, but you're going to see him drop even lower to get to it to buy himself some time. But you see him getting lower or getting shorter and staying shorter. The other thing I wanted you to take a look at is his weight shift. Shift. Just like Sierra Romero, you see him start at 50-50. You see him shift back. This is his float. This is a timing mechanism. He doesn't have a light, high leg kick like a Jose Batista or Josh Donaldson. He's got more of a slide step. But you do see him shift back over the back leg somewhat before he actually falls forward into his stride. The float is like being on a roller coaster. You get to the top of the roller coaster before you go down and have that drastic drop. You feel that moment of weightlessness, and that's what this is. It's a timing mechanism. So now let's compare both swings and the catapult loading system. So in conclusion, here's a side-by-side -side analysis. is pretty much frame for frame here, matched to frame for frame. You can see both hitters, Sierra Romero, obviously over here on the left, and Aaron Judge on the right. You're going to see them both showing numbers. You're going to see both of them high elbows right here to get that downward shoulder angle. You're going to see both of them hiding their hands, and that's going to help them to be the best hitters that they can be where we're talking about consistently hitting the ball with power. Power and average don't have to be mutually exclusive like a lot of coaches think. Power and average can be both together. It's as simple as walking mechanics, locomotion. Swing smarter by moving better before I let you go. The Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know repeatable hitting power does not start in the hips? Have you heard the expressions, load and explode the hips, power comes from the hips? Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that will show you how we added 48 feet of batted ball distance instantly, and it's not all about the hips. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.